a little bit about me. I love, absolutely love the game of baseball. I've always loved it. It's been my favorite sport since I could walk, since I could hold a ball, since I could throw things. David, where is he? He's outside probably. He throws things. He's a little baby like this tall, and he chucked the ball from over there all the way over the stage. Like, that's pretty hardcore. Can you get some kind of applause for David? That's Pastor Josh's son. Josh and Melanie have a great kid. If you don't know him yet, storm coming. So I love to play baseball, and as, as a young boy, I was a pretty impressionable youngster. So what I did was I would love to sit and watch baseball with my dad. That's pretty dark. <laughs> Brad done lost control. What are you going to do? Go get him, August. <laughs> oh, man. Guys, I just want to tell you, tonight, Satan is not going to win. He's not going to win, okay? We can forget lyrics all we want. The lights can go out all they want. He's not going to win. Are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. That's what I'm talking about. So I love to play baseball. I love to watch baseball. And I would be sitting at the TV like this, right in front of it. And I'd be watching a pitcher by the name of Randy Johnson. That guy is pretty awesome. He is six foot ten, and he throws a fastball at 102 miles an hour. That's wicked fast. That's some of the fastest pitching to ever be recorded. And, I mean, this guy, he's no doubt, he's the man. Like, he's destined for the Hall of Fame. He's one of the greatest pitchers to ever hurl the ball. One of my favorite things to watch in baseball is something known as the pitcher's duel. All right, that's when two pitchers are facing off against each other, strikeout after strikeout after strikeout. Next inning, same thing. It's so awesome to watch. A lot of people think it's boring. You're wrong. This is one of my favorite uh, videos of one of the best pitchers' duels I have ever seen in my life. Take it out. It's all right. Let it happen. Here we go. Here's the wind-up. Boom! Do you see that? Slow-mo, let's see that. Ready for this? Out of nowhere. Got him! Woo! Randy Johnson winds up and chucks the ball at 102 miles an hour and ends that pitcher's duel. That dove is donezo, all right? That's pretty awesome, let me tell you what. Oh, man. But Randy, he's known for his fastball, but guys, he had another pitch. And this pitch was my absolute favorite pitch. It's known as the slider. If you don't know anything about a slider, it's thrown with the velocity of a fastball, but with a twist. At the last second, this pitch is going to dive out of the way of the batter, and he's not going to even have a clue what happened. Are you awake? Are you ready? Can you stand up for me? All right, I need Aaron Dixon to come on down to the center field, okay? Right here. Now, the year is 1997. Raise your hand if you were born after that time. That's like all of you, okay? Here's the deal. 1997, I'm six years old. Six. I love baseball. So I'm playing for my coach, Dolph Yost. What a name. Get real, that's not a name. He's up there, and he says, okay, kids, time for the kids to pitch. This is my time to shine. All right, you know me. You know my personality. I'm ready to go. I'm one of the first to volunteer. Coach, I'll pitch. He says, all right, Drewby, get on out there. So I step confidently on the mound. I love baseball. I love to play baseball. I love to watch baseball. I would watch, and I would learn. I saw what Randy Johnson did. He'd put the glove real close to his face so that you couldn't see what he's telling you. He'd look at the catcher in the eye. I was ready. I stood in my stance. I want that pitch. Here it comes. The catcher wasn't even giving me signs. He's six years old. He doesn't know about signs. I'm sitting there, ready to roll. I know what it, makes, I know what it takes to make a wind-up look pro. I take my step. Is that picture of Randy Johnson up there? Because this is important. You see how he's throwing? That's Randy Johnson. I'm stepped. I turn and I lift my leg. I reach my arm back and I throw it. 
you really weren't. I mean, nobody was ready for that. That happened when I was six years old. I'll take that back if you don't mind. Six years old, I throw a pitch and it goes over that way. It didn't go to the catcher. It didn't even cross home plate. My coach is over there in front of the fence hanging on it like this because he's coaching six-year-olds. All right, he's hanging on the fence. It hits the fence. Drew, what was that? And I mean, I was a pipsqueak, okay? I'm like three foot six. And I said, coach, that was my slider. <sighs> it was a few years before I stepped onto the mound again. <laughs> so there's that. But you see, my dad spent hours with my brother and I because we all loved baseball. I inherited that, and I inherited being a Cardinals fan from him. <laughs> Don't boo it because we're better than you. It's okay. The fact of the matter remains, my dad loved baseball, and I loved my dad, so I wanted to be kind of like him. But really, I wanted to be like Randy Johnson, because that guy was throwing 102 miles an hour. He was going to go to the Hall of Fame. He's one of the best pitchers to ever throw. I want to be like Randy. But when my dad would play catch with us, he wouldn't be excited for me to throw it like this. Sideways, that's never going to get to him. He's standing over there where Aaron is. And so what he said to me was, he said, Drewby, you got to play true to your form. You're three foot six. Randy's 6'10. His arms are like nine feet long. He can throw sideways. You can't. Drew, you need to throw overhand. Okay? Overhand. Overhand. Again and again and again, he drilled that into my head, and I felt like a complete loser. Who do you know that throws overhand and is in the Hall of Fame? Not Randy Johnson, he throws sidearm. I wanted to throw sidearm like Randy Johnson, and I was angry at my dad for saying that I couldn't. <sighs> but he kept saying it, throw overhand, throw overhand, throw overhand, throw overhand. You're going to get better if you throw overhand. Your style is overhand. He knew that in order for me to succeed at what I wanted to do, what I loved, baseball, I needed to make a change. That conversation was not easy, but I mean... He loved me too much to let me ruin my dreams of playing baseball and having a great career because of my own stupid theories on how to be great by copying Randy Johnson. He knew that I needed to step up and I needed to throw like Drew and catch like Aaron. <laughs> Give Aaron a round of applause, everybody. Oh, gloves off. Here we go. All right. Oh. <sighs> He had not told me that throwing sidearm would destroy my arm. He didn't tell me, Drew, you're going to blow out your arm if you try and throw sidearm. He said to me, Drew, throw overhand. This is what's important. Had he not told me this truth that I had to be a certain way for who I am and be true to myself, I would have never been a very good player. I would have never enjoyed a career that lasted all the way up to college and a little bit of college for like a week. But, you know, I was there to do school, not, not baseball, so whatever. But the point of this is, my dad told me this truth in love. And guys, love wants us to win. Uh, Ephesians 4.15 says this. It says, we will speak the truth in love. We will grow like Christ in every way. And this week we've been talking about uh, walking in love and what that means for each one of us. And I just want to clear this up right now, and I want you to, to understand this. You cannot separate love and truth. They go together, way close together. So close together that if you try and separate it, you lose one, and you don't have both, and that's not true love. In high school, I had a teacher named Jim Van Duzer, all right? We called him Jimmy V. We called him Slim Jim behind his back, but don't tell him. He was like 6'5 and like 300 grams. He was really tiny. If you don't know what grams are, don't worry about it. It's a really light measure of weight. But he taught me something that was really important, all right? And this is something that I want you to catch. So if you've got a pen or a pencil or something or an arm or a friend, tell them to remember this because I learned this, and good grief, it changed my life. I didn't always remember it because I was young and I was stupid. Hallelujah, I was stupid. Can I get an amen from Lindsay? All right, she's not there. My wife's upstairs. She's chilling out and supporting me in this kind of thing, and uh, that's pretty cool. Give her a round of applause. That's what I'm talking about. He taught me that the phrase, I love you, means this. I care for you so deeply that I want God's best for you, even if it doesn't include me. 
See, this is what it means when you say, I love you. Because, you know, we may be faced in a situation where our relationship can be hurt if we're to say the truth. If we're to draw a line in the sand and say, no, I'm not but crossing this boundary. This is something that I've set up for myself. I want to tell you guys, I want to encourage you not to let other people's feelings or other people's wants and desires push you over your boundaries. Don't lose sight of who you are and the truth that you have claimed as Christ as your center. Don't lose it for a moment of pleasure. Don't pass it over because it's not worth it. I just want to I just want to share with something. Um, you do have rules. You do have boundaries. You do have an encouragement to live right. Right here. Right here. Okay? If you don't know what these rules are, if you don't know what these moral things are, look it up in here. Find out what they are and, and live by them. Don't break away for, from truth for anyone. Guys, I don't care how much he claims to love you. If he's not your husband, sex is not for you guys. I don't care how easy it would be just to, you know, slide over to the next web page and click that extra link. You know, I mean, it's just one click. It's not going to hurt. I don't care who's watching or what they're saying. Guys, stick to the truth. I don't care what our country legalizes. I care what God says in his word. That's to love others, to love yourself. Y'all owe it to yourselves. You owe it to your future selves to stay away from a situation that's going to set you up for embarrassing conversations later. For painful and, and just back out embarrassing STDs. If you don't know what that is, ask your counselor. <laughs> it's not worth it to set yourself up for the psychological torture. Did I say that right? Psychological torture that comes from the standards set by pornography and by the standards that are set by sleeping around with everybody that you can. Not, not worth it. Don't get lost in addiction, guys. Focus on what's important. Focus on your relationship with Christ. Everything else will follow after. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. No matter, I just want to encourage you with this. No matter what you've done up to this point, God offers grace. He's here for you, and he wants you just to run to him. Say, God, I know that I've, I've messed up. I'm looking to you. Help me out. It's as easy as that. You can stand up. You can brush off your shoulders, and you can keep moving forward for Christ. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do today. Make the choice to stand up and decide that no matter what or who comes your way, you're going to live for truth. And I, let's be real, it can be really, really hard sometimes. But you see, the truth says things that we absolutely need to hear, but we can't always see ourselves. It's the, the kind of thing that says, Drew, you know, that relationship, uh, that's toxic. That bullying is causing permanent scarring. Oh, man, you know, that, that behavior, that's destroying your family. Those drugs are literally frying your brain. That moment in your life, think about it, when you had to be blatantly honest with somebody, you had to get in their face and say, look, this has to change or you're going to be over. Your relationship with me, we're done. I don't want to be with you if you can't get a grip on your life. That hurts to say that. That hurts really bad. But sometimes you need it and you're oftentimes strengthened by what the other person has brought about in your life, which is change. Don't rebuke change. Sometimes you desperately need it. I want to ask you a question. Do you have someone in your life who speaks truth to you? Who holds nothing back? Who says the things that you absolutely need to hear? Because these are the people who truly love you. I mean, they care enough to tell us the truth. To me, this kind of love is the strongest kind of love because it, it, this love seeks the success of others. I think that's incredibly important. And in my sophomore year of college, 
I was, uh, it was a rainy Tuesday afternoon, and I was getting ready to go home for Thanksgiving break. I bust out of a classroom because it's the last class, and I literally run into my advisor. Dr. Dave Ward is his name. He is a great friend of mine, and when we were in college, we hung out. We would, I would go over to his house, and, and we went over for like a Christmas party. We played skip bow. We were eating Christmas cookies on his living room floor. He's a good amigo, all right? But he says to me, hey, Drew, been looking for you. Let's talk. <gasps> Anytime somebody who's really important says, let's talk, oh, just brace yourself, okay? I was prepared for the worst. I was like, okay, this is going to be horrible. But instead of the worst, this dude starts walking with me back to my dorm, and he's telling me about all the great things that he sees me doing. What the, like, the rock climbing and, uh, and the music teams. I, I, I stepped up. I was a leader in the rock climbing industry at our school. I was a leader in the music stuff, and he talked to me about all the great friendships that I had and everything. And I was like, this guy's my best friend. I love him. This is the best conversation I've ever had with him. This is sweet. What could go wrong? <laughs> he said that he's proud of me. He said that he's glad that I'm enjoying college and living it up to the fullest. I mean, when we got to my dorm, I expected that to be the end. It's just a nice little ego boost before I go home. See all my friends at home. I'm going to feel good about myself. But then he said, here's the thing. <laughs> uh, what? He said, you're drowning, aren't you? I'm like, uh, you just listed all the good things that I'm doing. Okay, I'm not drowning, I'm doing fine. He didn't let me off the hook. He said, your priorities stink. He brought up um, something that, that I had not told anybody. I hadn't even told my mom, and I literally tell my mom everything. Okay, that's, that's who I am. And, and, and he said to me, Drew, you're going to fail. This is going to be your last semester at Indiana Wesleyan University. If you don't get a grip and start taking school seriously. I was like, ah, he called me out. Now I feel like a complete loser. He just talked to me about how good I am. Don't, let's go back there. Let's talk about that stuff again. Mm. You need to get a grip and you need to get serious. It's in this moment where he, he not only told me, like, you're going to fail. He gave me the tools to succeed. He said, Drew, you're going to put yourself in three categories. This is how I succeeded, and this will help you, he said. He said, put three categories on your planner. A, important and urgent. This is my test that I have to do tomorrow, okay? This is the thing i got to study for and do right away. Then B, important but not really urgent. That's the group project that's due in three weeks at the end of the semester. And finally, C, not important, not urgent. That's jamming with my friends after we're done with, uh, you know, Thanksgiving break. If I've got work to do, that needs to come first. I mean, I told you, I ate Christmas cookies on this guy's living room floor. I don't want to hear this stuff from him. That hurt. Grief that hurt. In the moment, it gave me the fuel, though, that I needed to make the change. Because he didn't just say, you suck at life. Stop being so dumb. He gave me what I needed to succeed. I turned myself around, and I, and I finished college with a respectable GPA. I'm not a grade student, but I'm a student that gets by, and a student who works really, 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 really hard to make things work. And his goal in this moment was to help me grow, help me grow up, and help me to grow more like Christ, who, by the way, Christ had a really good sense of priority. Had he not spoken that truth to me in love, uh, guys, I'd have failed right out of college. That'd have been the end. I wouldn't be here. I'd, I don't even want to think about where I'd be. And, and one, of the, one of the friends that, that I have back at, at my home church, he told me this. He said that there's two parts of speaking truth in love. The first is the building up of someone. And this is this is really nice. That's the ego boost that we were talking about. That's him telling me you're doing great with all these things at the college, and I'm proud of you. You're my favorite, high five. I don't know if he said favorite. I may have just heard that. But then the second part is called loving confrontation. You're going to fail, and it's going to be bad. If somebody only receives the first, that's just the ego boost. That's not, that's not good enough. That's not going to bring about any kind of change. That's just going to make me feel awesome, and my head's going to get a little bit bigger. Not what you want. And the second one, I mean, that's just an arrow to the knee. 
really, that's not something that you want. Nobody can walk with an arrow in the knee. That's just the facts, all right? But the truth spoken in love, it wants us to win. Because love enables us to hear truth, not as a slam, but as a push in the right direction. See, it's truth that gives us direction. It's truth that helps us be all that we can be. And it's truth that saves us from a wrecked future. Now, my brother, uh, he is a friend who he played ball with. All right, remember six, uh, three foot six Drewby? There was a three foot two Anthony, all right? My little brother. He played baseball with a guy who, uh, he had a good time. He, he was okay friends with him. But um, if you remember back to your, back to your elementary school and, and your, maybe your middle school days, you were taken through classes called D.A.R.E. Have you any, anybody been through the D.A.R.E. classes, the D.A.R.E. program? It's Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It teaches you to stay off drugs, all right? That's a pretty good class. If you haven't taken one, maybe think about it because it's pretty good. But we're taught to stop, stay away from drugs. This is real kind of love right here because these people are like, hey, I messed up. I was strung out on drugs for 20 years. I served 40 years in prison. Now I'm free and I'm, I'm, I'm better. This is all good. I don't have any teeth, but I'm, I'm better now. That's real love because they're saying to you, don't fall into this trap blindly. Avoid it. Walk around it. And this friend, he, uh, he instead chose to embrace the drug trade. And um, a few weeks ago, his actions brought about consequences in a pretty big way to the tune of helicopters, canine units, and police officers chasing him along a river and eventually surrounding him and capturing him. Thank goodness it was without confrontation. It was just chase. Whew, that could be bad. He could, have, he could have been killed for drugs, for just buying, selling, trading, doing all the stupid stuff. Don't do it. Just be smarter than that. If he would have just chose to listen to love instead of, instead of listening to his own stupidity and his own get-rich-quick schemes, he, he wouldn't be sitting in jail right now getting ready to serve major time on drug trafficking charges. It's a big deal. See, truth is the guardrail on the road of life. It keeps us out of the ditch and away from oncoming traffic. It helps us to um, just understand where we need to go and navigate the road of life so that we don't miss out on what God has for us. Guys, the truth is right here. It's right here. It's in this Bible. It can be in your smartphone. I mean, it could be in your heart. It could be in your head, well, depending on how you, how you view memorization. It could be with you always. And that's something that's pretty important. The truth is available outside the walls of your church, guys. Don't just look for Sunday or whenever your, your midweek uh, or, or Sunday night youth program is. Don't look for that to fill you completely for the week, for the month, maybe for the year. Don't let camp be the only Jesus that you get. Take this truth home. Look for it. Live by it. This truth comes to us through the, through the words of Jesus Christ, and, and which are found right here in the Bible. And he said, Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. So look to him in moments when, when things look like they're more than you can handle. When you, when you maybe need to make a change, look to him. Because it's in him that we are made free. You heard the phrase, the truth shall set you free. That's not talking about literally telling the truth. If you tell the truth, sometimes you're going to get in trouble. That's the way it is. You own up to murdering somebody, jail. All right? The truth, Jesus Christ, will set you free. He can take away your sin, and he can move you in the right direction with him. The truth is not designed to hurt you. It does hurt sometimes to hear the truth. I mean, when I heard I couldn't throw like Randy Johnson, hurt. When I heard that I was going to fail out of college and that somebody else knew about it, hurt. When my dad told me that I needed to stop fooling around and get serious about where the direction my life was going, it was a pain, and it hurt. But receiving the truth in love will make all the difference in your life. It'll free you up to be all that you can be. So I want to ask you now, in this moment, where is truth for you? Where does it come in? Is it something that you think about later? Is it something you don't even know? Are you ready to hear it? And are you ready to receive it? Because that's important. 
You can just let it bounce off you all you want, but until you receive it, it's not going to make any bit of difference. The fact of the matter is, is that we all live in darkness. I mean, the things of this world, they, they want to tear us down and destroy our faith. Am I right? It hurts to live in this world because everything is so blasted awful. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. His truth, guys, it's right here in this book. If you don't have a Bible, we've got things out in the back. They're, they're life books is what we call them. It's the book of, of John, right? It's the book of John, and that's a great book to start with, guys. If you've never read in through the Gospels, I really encourage you to do that. We're going to have some people out at the doors th- tonight with those books. If you need one on your way back to your small groups, feel free to take one because it's really important. As the band comes out, I want to, I want to just draw to your attention this idea of light. See, the truth is the light that is around us in this dark, dark world. The closer you are to light, the clearer you can see the things around you. The more apparent God's will can be in your life, the closer you are to truth. The more easily you can see what obstacles are in your way so that you know which way to go to get around them. Mm. The closer you are to truth, the further you are from living in a wrecked future, a future that looks like it has no hope, none, a future where you destroy your hopes and dreams because you weren't willing to live for truth. Take a second. Just close your eyes, please. Think about it. Is living in truth something that you want to do? I know that you can. Just the same way you learn to ride a bike, the same way you learn maybe to swim, run, play soccer, do your hair. You can live by truth. If you've fallen down, and I know falling down stinks, You can get back up. In this moment, I'm encouraging you to. I'm encouraging you to get up, brush your shoulders off, and move forward with a focus on the light that is truth, that will illuminate the world around you. Focus on Christ. Oh, hallelujah, he's amazing. It's worth it to live by truth, guys, girls. It's worth it. I want to know right now in this moment if that's something you're wanting to do. If you're ready to live by truth, keep your eyes shut. You can if you want. You can open them, whatever. Just stand up. If this is a time when you're saying, okay, God, I'm all in. Truth, I'm yours. Stand up. We want to empower you tonight. Because this isn't something that you can do on your own. This is something you need a team for. God has placed in each one of your lives, because you're a part of this camp, he has equipped you with a team. The people that came with you from your church. The people who brought you. The district staff, we love you. We are here for you. Camp isn't the only time you can contact us, just so you know. You can reach out. We're here. Facebook's a great tool, isn't it? I want you to know that tonight you can live by truth, and it can go with you wherever you are. It can be here while you're at camp. It can go with you to school. It can be in your home. I know a lot of you may have wretched home lives, situations that do not promote Christ in any way, shape, or form, but I want to tell you God cares for you. He loves you so much. He died for you. We want to empower you tonight to live for truth. These sponsors, these these pastors are all around the room. They're in the back. They're on the front. We're here for you. What we want to do is we want to invite you to step forward. Receive individual or, or, or small group prayer 
over your lives. All these people are equipped to do that. Will you step out in this moment and will you say that, God, you've got me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit because this is what's going to happen, guys. You're going to leave this place changed. Not from this, not from this message, this any of this camp. You're going to leave here changed through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's something to get excited about because God loves you so much that he cared for you enough to die for you. Will you care enough to step up, to live for truth and say that the things of the world are behind me, I'm going to take care of business by the word of God. I'm going to live for truth. It's totally worth it, guys. It is totally worth it. So in this moment, step forward. Come and, come and pray with your sponsors. Pray with your leaders. God wants to be with you here. He wants to meet with you individually. He wants to meet with you as groups. God is going to do something incredible. They're going to pray with you. I'm going to pray a general prayer. The band is going to play, and, and it's just going to be a moment where you can make decisions. It's a moment where you can facilitate growth. God is going to do amazing things in each one of your lives, and I am so excited for what he's going to show you. God, I thank you for who you are and for who you've created us to be. Thank you for making us a way. Thank you for giving us this truth that is Jesus Christ that gives us the opportunity to serve you and know that there's hope. I ask that you would make each one of us truth seekers. That no matter what comes into our lives, that you would take care of us. You would guide us you would give us the direction we need to push forward in your name. God, I pray for the people who are, who are in the seats. I pray that you would stir their hearts, Lord. You know the hearts of the people. And we know that you give them the power that it takes to make differences for you. God, I ask for you to give them the courage to take this home, this idea that truth sets them free, that walking in truth and love is the way to go. Keep them free from all the things that would take them away from you and keep distance between you and them, but bring them close to you so that they can't help but be changed. We thank you for that work, Holy Spirit. God, I pray finally for for continued life change. Take care of us. Don't let it just be a one week thing, God. You are so amazing and so powerful that you can take this change that happens in this moment, this encouragement that we've received, God, and you can renew it day in, day out. You are so powerful. God, we thank you for what's going on. Empower us, Holy Spirit. Fill us. Give us the tools we need to stick to you and stick with truth. And all the things that we think, say, and do. Your name we pray. Amen.